Welcome to Peace in the Valley, where adventure starts at home. In today's video, we are going to make some ramps. Let's get started. This video is quite long, so we are going to skip quite a bit of this. Uh, I will fast forward through it, not really skip. So I would like to uh, just show you what all we did. We got the iron from C. Henry Steel, or the steel, and what we did is take the square tube steel, we cut it to four foot each, and then we took angle iron and cut it to 11 inches, and then we welded it, so that brought us to about 14 inches for the total width. And what you're going to find in this video is, is that I think we made these a little bit too short, but they do work. We are probably going to add on extensions to these, but in this video you're going to find that we actually made a big failure on the part, and you're going to see that at the end of this video. But we're going to try to keep it moving pretty quick, and then we're going to have a part two that shows how to uh, how we built these correctly then and just did a simple modification actually made it lighter and at the same time made it sturdier after we cut the square tube we wanted to make sure we cleaned it up and i'll tell you the angle grinder on these jobs is one of your best friends Now we begin to measure off 11 inches for each of the pieces of angle iron and we make enough so that we can have the same number of rungs that we would want on both sides. This is eighth inch by one and a half inch angle iron. And like I said before, it was purchased at C. Henry Steel in Fort Wayne and their prices just cannot be beat, especially if you compare it to your local box stores, which I would highly recommend against. Oh, 
now I'm getting ready to weld the lip on for the ramps. I would not do this part again because I could not weld on the inside and the pressure is all on this back weld rather than uh, on the front inside which is where it, uh, where it should be at. So now we measure so the rungs can be evenly spaced. And we do this for both sides and then we put a bar on the end to keep it square and then we actually use the speed square to ensure the accuracy of that. Now we are going to quickly tack this down, uh, each one of the rungs, so that way we can get it up higher where we have a little bit more workability for welding. And I do have to say that this little welder from Harbor Freight has been fantastic. It weighs only 15 pounds and it is so easy to use. This day was incredibly hot. It was over 90 degrees and I'm wearing a sweatshirt, uh, excuse me, a pretty heavy jacket just so I don't get hit with all the splatter from welding and also so I don't get sunburned from it. Now we have finished tacking the rungs down. We are going to weld them on permanently. So here we take a little bit more time and go through each one. Uh, again, this welder worked just fantastic, especially once I switched wire, it worked even better. Here I am adding on the lip, which I end up not using, but I am going to show it to you anyway because this was part of the failure of the unit. This part did not fail though. What we are doing here is putting a piece of flat iron to make a lip to go over the edge of the trailer uh, smoothly for the tractor. We end up not using it though.
Hello everybody. We are, I hope, finished with our ramps for the trailer. I don't think I could have got this done without some of these tools and I'll tell you what, this little welder right here, it's tiny, it weighs about 15 pounds from Harbor Freight. It has been a fantastic little welder. Uh, you load it up and I found out that the Vulcan wire is actually much better than what comes with it, but that's okay because it, it taught me a lot more. Now I'm not trying to say that my welding is, is perfect or anything, but I think the job uh, completed successfully, even if it's not the most beautiful welds in the world. I got a lot of practice in. I ran this hard for a couple of days and it never failed once. It's really lightweight. I was extremely impressed by it. The other tool is the angle grinder. The cordless angle grinder from DeWalt is just fantastic. I don't know how in the world I got along without an angle grinder for so long. Uh, the other thing is a wire brush. Get yourself a nice wire brush and some good gloves if you're going to do any kind of welding. Okay, next up we're going to do some testing. We're going to see how well our welds hold up. We're going to do some basic ground tests where we just drive over them with the tractor and then if that holds up, then we're going to hook them up to the trailer and see if that works. Follow along. Okay, we're going to test this right now. We're going to get on the tractor and just drive up on one wheel. That'll put the most pressure on it that we can. And we're going to see how this works. Okay, it looks like the tractor succeeded at the first test with the front end. Now we're going to try the back end, and we're going to do it with the backhoe. The backhoe weighs a thousand pounds on its own. The whole thing combined, I'm assuming or calculating that it weighs somewhere around the 3,000 pound mark, maybe a little more. But we're going to try it with the back end wheels now. There was no problem on the first front end. Well, it looked like it passed the test just fine, so we're going to try it out on the uh, trailer next. Stay tuned. There's one thing I just noticed that I did not account for, and that is right down here, the angle is not the same uh, as when I was measuring it and set it up. I was setting it up specifically for the trailer being unhooked to the vehicle and I realized that more than likely it is going to be hooked up to the vehicle so to compensate right now I do have a couple of 2x4 or 2x6's underneath I don't think that's an issue but could be okay we're ready to try it Maybe we can be more successful in part two.